Hey there everybody, Pop on Top here, and welcome back to episode number three of Starfield. We're playing the game again. I do I'm on the main screen. I haven't even loaded the game up yet because I wanted to show how much I played the game already. So I wanted to show load here. This is my exit save on my, you know, off YouTube recording character. I've played for one day and two hours and thirty-four minutes. And a level twenty! I've done a lot. A lot of this video game. Now I understand the things. Now I kinda went in raw with my first two episodes. Now I'm not. I know I know all the things. I've done all the things. So, we're going to make sure we load. We're going to select our character. We're going to go back to Clara, based off of my daughter, obviously. We've been playing for 2 hours and 20 minutes already. So let's load this game up. Now, the Neuro Strike skill gives you a chance to stun and increase EM damage to an enemy. Neuro Strikes. We're going to punch people. This, this is very relevant. The game knows the loading screen tips. So obviously, I haven't played this character a little bit. My other character uses guns. Like, shoots people, pistols, and shotguns, kind of, to that extent. Um... And does all different kinds of things. So I, if I remember here, we were stuck on a side quest because we didn't have any picks. Uh, whatever the heck they're called. So I know how to get more of those now, though, which is the positive news. Um, I don't have a lot of things that my other character has, so you guys are going to have to bear with me as I get used to these things. Um, I've been trying to optimize my settings here, too, on PC. Still playing on PC. Uh, I just don't want to handle the 30 frames per second of the Xbox consoles right like that's that's kind of the deal here now i'm not always getting 60 frames per second here even on pc that's not a thing that's not a, it's cpu limitations and stuff so i know though that if i go over to this general store over here this blue one right here they should have digi picks i believe that's what they're called digital picks now i like the system i think it's a lot more interesting than previous entries because previously if it belongs on your ship then i'm sure we have it for sale ah uh, sure hi there hello Thanks you should like way too in. cheerful i mean you're selling things so. I can take care of transactions, and if you've got questions, just ask. Uh, I just want a digi pick. Oh, please, take a look. Because I need that for the quest. And then we're, see, she has two, so we're gonna buy two of those. Right off rip. And then we could sell things. I guess, do we have anything to sell? I probably do have things to sell, huh? So what do I, I, <laughs> do I not have a helmet equipped? I, like, lost all my things. <laughs> I'm so lost, you guys. Okay, give me a second, you guys, okay? Because, like I said, business. I, I, I said this at the end of the last episode. I'm going to do so much stuff in this game over the weekend. Like, and I did. It's, it's been the weekend and stuff. So, none equipped because that's fine. And we got a rape shank. Um, we're going to sell some things. Obviously, I don't really need guns. I'm not using guns. I'm going to do a melee build here. We also have our gold space suit, which is actually very good. we got to equip the helmet. Which one do we want here? This one, I think. Just a regular deep space mining helmet for now is fine. Um, this one's tending to got better energy and corrosion resistance. All that stuff is going to become relevant later. But we're not going to equip the pirate helmet because we just look like a pirate. Um, I stole the space trucker hat. <laughs> I didn't even realize. So we have plus health and O2, plus health, research, sudden development, health and O2. That's kind of a nice one. I like this one. I mean, if it's all plus health and O2, I guess that's the same thing, right? I can rock this one for now, maybe. I really like my character's hat, too, and stuff. But, like, they're vaguely all the same like is, these little outfits is mostly just what you want your character to look like i'm gonna make sure i equip the stuff that i want to equip um what's my new item oh yeah the digipix duh <laughs> so what you could do here too as i said this is something i learned over the weekend this is something you just find out there's so many things in this game that you just got to kind of find out the raw way um so what i could do is i can hit this right bumper when i'm here on my space suit and then it will make it so when i'm not in space it won't show it. Same thing with my helmet. So, like, I previously unequipped my helmet. Now I can just hide it. So, when my character is just sitting here in town, I'm just wearing my clothes. My, my spacesuit's on, and it will be on. It will pop up on if I go into space and all that stuff. But you can actually see your character's clothes and all that stuff. But this gives us a lot of stuff to sell. Yes, just shut up, please. <laughs> so, I don't need the pistol, the laser rifle, the submachine gun, the assault rifle, the other pistol, the other assault rifle. We'll take the rescue ass. We're not going to take the laser pistol either. we got a couple melee weapons and mostly our fist. The cutter we need, obviously, because mining and stuff. So we can get rid of the other space suit. We can get rid of these other packs. We don't need these. And then we don't need the other helmet and one of these. And we don't need all these other outfits for now. Boom, 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 boom. Sell things, make a bunch of money. We do that a lot. And all these resources and stuff. We have any missed things that we don't really want? Like, I, this we don't actually need, right? This is garbage, garbage, garbage. I started picking up stuff up. I started to learn, you guys, what stuff is garbage and what stuff is not. Now, Thanks for shopping at Jefferson Mercantile. we're going to go finish the side quest that we were on, right? Is that the thing that's marked? Yeah, access the apartment. Because we were helping figure out who was stealing the power and stuff, right? That was the deal going on here. So we're going to continue to do that. Um, but we are going to finish that. And then we're going to kind of get to the main quest. Because I got distracted. I, I was coming here to do the main quest. 
Um, and then I got distracted because I was like, one side quest? And there's so many in this game. It's so fucking vast, you guys. Like, it's overwhelming in its vastness. I keep finding myself in these situations where I'm like, oh, I'm going to do a side quest. Just one side quest, and then at least to another side quest, and at least to another side quest, and at least to another side quest, right? Like, it's just a lot. There's a lot of stuff on the go here. Um, so we're going to go lockpick this door. I have learned the lockpicks. I literally just froze there. Hopefully they didn't fuck the video. Um, performance, right? I'm jumping. Not for any particular reason. I've also heard, I was talking about this previously. I know I have a lot of things to cover. This fitness perk is broken. Like, it just doesn't work. You're supposed to use up all your available oxygen, I do. Um, but it doesn't actually count towards the challenge progress for any reason. We're still working on punching things to death. Um, we got our increased health, which is good. We're going to do a lot of physical tree stuff in this thing. We're obviously going to go in this combat tree. We're going to take dueling for melee weapon damage. Um, and we got hacking and that's it this is so very limited on stats we want to take persuasion maybe like obviously like a speech type skill got so many things to do and we obviously have vasco the robot man with us for now so let's go in here we gotta lock pick this door why not so i figured this out too like so like i didn't previously understand how this system worked okay so what this is is this outside circle we have here we gotta put two digi picks in here that fit in this one so we probably need a three if we can swing it like that and then we can do this one here because the next one is going to be the finish that and then the inner circle is the next two so this should work if we go like here and then this one should fit here some way i messed it up already didn't i this is not going to work all right so i i messed it up it's, it, it gets easier the higher level you get. So I only have one more digipick, so I could actually mess this up again. So I actually got to pay attention. But you can see all the things you need ahead of time, right? So if this one's going to fit here, which it does, right? You can see all the little slots fit in all the little slots. We got to think about what we're going to do next. So this one could go not here next. This could go here. This is probably going to go here. And then that leaves us with what? Three that we need like this one. So we, need, we could use this one. And then we're going to use this one. And then we're going to combine these two in a particular fashion that works like see how that's all covered now we can kind of you can kind of plan all the whole thing ahead of time four to five locks level three already very cool now we have lots of things i want to take potentially right i'm not going to take increased health we're going to eventually level this stuff but we're going to get down in here to the next because you have to put what four points in here so i have three one two and three to get down in here now i think there's tech skills i definitely want to take too um but we're, for now we're going to take Persuasion. I think it's just kind of too hard to play this game without persuasion, right? Now, you don't have to do that, I think. It's not like a requirement, I actually think. But, like, I think that may be the way I want to go. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to do. Obviously, most of this combat stuff is guns. Um, demolitions here is explosives, right? This is melee weapons. So we can do some of that stuff, I think. But we're going to, you know, try to focus, I think, on the melee build. So we don't need reloading, we don't need marksmanship. Most of this stuff, armor penetration, all that stuff, we don't really need all that stuff. Science is stuff that's got benefit. Um, you know, healing is going to be really important because we're going to run at people and get shot a lot. <laughs> right? It is just the deal. This boost pack training is very important. Being able to fly ships better is very important. I'm really ass at that. Um, stealth is good. might be important. We might not actually sneak. We just might run at people and punch them in the face. But sneaking is cool. You get down to concealment and stuff here. This is like... Ninja from Fallout 4 where you do really huge amounts of bonus sneak attack criticals like at the bottom of concealment here Rank 4 concealment does 10 times melee sneak attack crit damage. That's insane um, But not something we're gonna worry about right away now I'm gonna get my physical tree, but I think I'm gonna take boxing rank 2 to get this up here And then we'll start taking stuff in here like Combat slide and take less fall damage. That's kind of cool Right like Increases jump height, run faster after combat, sliding or mantling. Like we can, we can really turn Starfield into a movement shooter. We're gonna, we're gonna be about it. But and then pain tolerance, damage resistance is really good. Um, and then energy resistance here too. We're just because we're gonna have to tank a lot of shit. Food is better. It's not that valuable. Um, cellular regeneration. There's all kind. Like you look at the bottom parts of these trees here. Neural strikes. Obviously, we want to get to too. Ten percent chance to stun an NPC. Unarmed attack is additional electromagnetic damage. 20% chance to send an NPC with unarmed attacks. After sending an enemy, you also knock down any enemies within close range. You just boom, and then like a shockwave knocks them all down while punching. I think we are going to take persuasion for now, though. And then just succeed in three speech checks. I think this is very critical. Like, you can persuade people without the persuasion skill, but it's just a big, it's a big deal. Persuasion is a big deal. That's the way we're going to go on level three. 
Okay, we'll, we'll get to more stuff later. There's so many skills to get to. And this is a really a game that you need skills in order to do things. Like, at all. Like, so if you don't have the lockpicking skill, you just can't lockpick, obviously. But, like, you, there's other things you need to. So now, we just need to check this computer here, right? Because we actually get to the quest. Um... So we download the file, it's the evidence. So we, we could choose here, we got choices, because it's very much an RPG game. I just wanted to see if there's any other loot that might be valuable in here. And there might be. Um, I know that there is magazines, like, or skill books type of thing, where you can get, like, kind of skills in order to enhance your character, like, with perm buffs. Um, but I don't see any in here, but I was checking, you know. I've seen that now, I've, I've seen the things, I'm learning the things. I'm going to miss some things though, you guys. I'm going to be honest with you, okay? That's just part of the circumstances of the deal. Okay? Like, I am not very perceptive. Um, and thankfully, there's no perception stats. You don't have to make it really low. Because <laughs> of punching people in the face. See, fist up. Um, so now we got that done-ish. Right? Like, we did We did do that. We're going to go turn it in. So we could turn it in to the trade authority lady, who is kind of a bitch, to be fair, right? Or we could turn it into the lady that we helped in the first place, and she can decide what to do with it. And we're going to turn it into the lady who we helped in the first place. Because we have choices. We make decisions. It's RPG stuff. The frames, though. All the big cities, as far as I can tell. All the major cities in this game. This new Atlantis, obviously, this being the first one that we go to. All kind of run like ass. <laughs> like, I'm out of... See, I'm out of oxygen. So this should... This should, because I've ran out of oxygen... It should be 1 out of 20 on this skill, and it's not. I, I'm trying to see if I, like, do I have to, like, run into CO2 things where, I, like, I completely burn my shit up? Does this, do I die? Let's see. Let's, 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 let's do a quick save. I'm gonna run. I'm gonna, like, completely fill myself up with O2. Do I die? Further health exhaustion will damage your health. Okay, I completely ran out. Did that count the skill? Or is it just literally broke? No, that's 1. Okay, so no, 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 no. I understand now. I can actually fix this. Because I, I understand what it wants for me, I think. It's not run out of oxygen. It's completely fill up with CO2 <laughs> to the point where you're almost damaging your health. And it's a, it's a cool system. I do like this system compared to like a, even like an AP bar from Fallout. There's some interesting things you can do with it. So I want, can I do that again? If I just like fill this up again? Or do I have to completely let it fill up? Yes, the water is pleasing. relies on advanced hydroelectrics for most of its power. Okay, did that count as again? I'm just, I'm, yes, thank you, Basket, for the backstory. That's one. So I think I have to let it come all the way back and then let it run all the way out again. It is very inconvenient in that aspect to a certain degree. Um, but we will eventually get that skill leveled up, maybe. I think that the ability for us to have lots of oxygen, because punching and all this stuff, jumping requires oxygen. If we're going to be a big running at people person, we're going to need a lot of oxygen. So we might want to upgrade that particular stat. So we're going to head over here. Now, I know a lot of, there's been a lot of hoopla on the internet, like a lot of people being like, oh man, look, there's no map, like you can't see shit, <laughs> right? I don't, you don't need a map, That's for, maps are for noobs, okay? Like, use your eyeballs, and plus, if you enter your scanner, they will put a little arrow on the ground, not apparently currently, but like, there usually is a little arrow on the ground that shows you the direction to go. There's so many people here, Jesus Christ. I am, I have not, I'm not playing on ultra setting anymore, I have lowered it down to high preset but with a uh, full resolution scaling because I'm playing at 1080p I'm not playing at a high resolution right now because the game doesn't you know run particularly well anyway so here you go lady though here's your things so you tracked it down you got something to show for I do great I'll get this back to mass for analysis I'm not stupid I know Zoe probably made you an offer you know it's just credits and I'm really glad we got the work together. Yeah, you know, I'm glad. I got 2,000 credits, though. It's not too bad. And I got some XP. 75 of that. It's not very much. 75 is not a lot of XP. I, this game is not... So that's done now? Or... It wants me to do a whole other step. I don't... I mean, okay. No, no, no. One small step. That is quest is done. We finished that quest. So we're going to finish one small step. We're going to go to the lodge, which... Is the home of Constellation, which is what we're supposed to be doing because of, like, like, Protocol Indigo or whatever. We're supposed to, like, not distract ourselves from the mission. So we're going to not distract ourselves from the mission anymore, like Barrett said. And we're going to go over here. And we're going to go talk to Constellation and figure out what that's all about and all the things. And we're going to do main quest stuff. And we're going to do main quest stuff for a while. Like, I think, like, obviously it is extremely easy to get distracted by a bunch of side quests in this game. It really is, right? Like, but I think 
you shouldn't like rush the main quest in the sense that you should just get to the end of it right away. You shouldn't just be main quest done and then I'm done. Okay, I want to run all the way out. There we go. So the lodge should be over here? Yeah, if I remember right, it's in this forested area. And I don't really remember this very well because as soon as you go to the lodge, you can just like, when you come back to this planet, you can just land right at the lodge and you never have to do this again. So, <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not worried about it. Also, apparently there's like a really good, there's some things we can do here. There's lots of things, there's lots of things. We're gonna build up steps. I, I just forget how early I am in the game in comparison. Two hours versus 20 hours is a humongous difference in like, how much Starfield you're doing, right? Like, it is a lot. Like, a really Here big difference. Are. The lodge. The front door should unlock if you hold up the watch that Barrett gave you. I have messaged the other members of Constellation. They will be waiting for us inside. Okay, sounds good. No problems. Hold up the watch. Which is, like, the same thing as your HUD. Your HUD is on the watch. It's a very pit boy of it, right? There's, like, there's all kinds of, like... Bethesda things in this, right? Like, obviously, it's still very much a Bethesda game, but it's like got its own unique twist on all of these things and stuff, right? So this is the lodge. Clara. Yeah, Everyone Clara, though. In the library, just inside. If Barrett were here, he'd probably tell you that you're part of something bigger now, and he hopes you'll make this place your home. I will. Okay, but I'm gonna talk to all the people. Lots of people in the lodge. Hello. We appear to have a visitor. Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. We do! Would you care to tell us what happened to our friend? Why you're here and he isn't? Uh, well, I mean, Pyrus did attack and Barrett asked me to bring it. He said he would stay. That was the deal. He said you that. see? Vasco, verify. All statements made have been factual. Yeah, robot, I didn't lie. Uh, this is just typical. Barrett hands over our ship and our robot to some random employee of that discount mining outfit he uses. That's very disrespectful. Walter. And if we hadn't insisted on installing those emergency protocols, I guarantee you this rock breaker here would be halfway to Neon. But that didn't happen. She's here with the artifact. I did bring the artifact. Thank you, Mateo. Now, let's focus on what's in front of us, shall we? What happened when it was extracted? Did anyone see anything? Hear anything? Yeah, I got the trippy lights and music. That's it was trippy. Interesting. Similar to Barrett's description of the experience, with less embellishment. You can tell that Barrett's the type of character that would embellish the story. Whether it happened or not wasn't in doubt. If this is the greatest mystery in the universe, why couldn't it be part of the ultimate mystery? But gentlemen, can we please focus? Noel, I think it's time we tested your theory. That's Noel. Right. Let's see. We know the artifacts react to each other. The pieces we already have move when they're in close contact. Now, if we add this new one to the two we already have... The artifact. If you could place it on the table here. Yeah, we'll see what happens. That's No, there's a shit ton of them. Spoiler alert. Oh my god, that's it. They're reacting. Look at how it's coming together. That energy that's arcing between them, no manufactured material in the subtle systems can do that. None of them. This proof. Easy, girl. Breathe. You'll have a hunt to Yeah, calm down just a little bit. She's not the only one. If they're coming together, that makes them so sad. Built by an intelligence outside the subtle systems. Still 2,000 credits for our little wage. You're on, Walter. Well, if you had all the answers, it wouldn't be exciting, now would it? Not to take away from the moment, but what are we going to do about our new friend? <laughs> so, are you ready to get to work? See if exploration is the life you want to lead in this little universe of ours? Sure, I mean... Whatever, man. I'm I'm kind of good on it. Like I'm about it. Like I don't know what you do. It like to be like, nah, dude. I don't want to fucking be part of Constellation. <laughs> I'm cool, man. You should take some time to get settled in. Introduce yourself to everyone. Some of our members aren't here, but you'll meet them soon. Come find me when you're ready. You and I are going to be doing some traveling together. Get your feet wet. Maybe more than my feet. God. I think you've earned something for bringing the artifact to us. Money. And in addition here? to credits, 
Why don't we set you up with a backpack with some boost capability? Hmm? I believe I have a boost we'll backpack already. Anyway. Just mind your head. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. That's 8,000 credits, Constellation Pack. I got the key to the lot, and I got to level up because I'm pogging out of Mount Gord. Now, I could, and it, there's an argument to be made to take Boost Pack. <clears throat> I'm trying to think if I don't want to do that. If there would be any reason I don't want to take Boost Pack training. Because if you don't take this, like I said, I was talking about earlier in the video, Starfield is a game where unless you take a skill, you don't get to use the skill so like unless i take this boost pack skill at all i don't get to boost pack now i'm going to take boost pack because i just think it's fun as fuck we're turning starfield into a movement shooter except for we're not going to be shooting we're going to be running boost jumping sliding mantling punching people in the face like or swinging the sword or fucking the little pick thing i fucking got or whatever the deal is but we got boost pack training i think that's where we're going to go for now we're kind of spread out but obviously no science and no combat yet. And I don't think we're going to go, like I said, too deep in that. I don't think we're going to go too deep in this necessarily either. Lots of physical stats and some tech maybe. We'll see how that goes though. Now, it obviously wants us to talk to Sarah. But we also just got like an explosion of side quest activities. Talk to Noel. Well, I guess that's it for the one. But it does want us to talk to everybody. She did say talk to everybody. Let's talk I to Noel. Everyone's excited by the arguments. But we need to be as objective as possible and be aware of possible negative effects. That was intense, wasn't it? The artifacts, I mean. Sorry, this must all be a little overwhelming for you. No, I don't get overwhelmed by shit. I guess a lot overwhelming, now that I think about it. I'm Noelle. It's really nice to meet you. And thank you for bringing the artifact to us. Not a problem. Uh, Saren said something about a place for me to stay, though? Like a house? Like a like a unit? Planning on sticking around then? Good. I just like having I a think house. I can find a spot for you. And along the way, I can give you the very abbreviated tour. So you've seen the library. This is the library, like books. Walter is quite proud of the collection, but Matteo has made more than a few contributions. Gardens are out the doors there. Gardens. If you need a moment of quiet contemplation. Emphasis on the quiet part. At least we'll get we'll get to all this stuff later. Let's too. head upstairs. We're going upstairs. Here we Sebastian go. Sebastian Banks, Constellation's founder, had this place built decades ago. It was a big to do at the time, but most people in the city have forgotten we're here. I hope you are satisfied with the quarters available to you. Vasco, I'll try. I know you're just being a good robot boy, and you're just trying your best to, to be positive. So I appreciate Vasco and his positivity. She opened that door with her mind. You know, but that's the thing still. Okay, don't worry about it. It is what it is. Artifacts, though. What the fuck are they doing? All right, we'll figure all that out later. We're doing the things. We're, do we're doing the quests. We're doing all the stuff and things. This is a bar. She's gonna tell us that though, but like, there's a cooking station right there. Looks like a cooking station. So this is the bar. Usually no tender, so help yourself within reason, of course. Now let's see about that room. So yeah, you can have. Luck. We were almost at max occupancy already, but there's still one room up for grabs. It's been nice having the place so full. So, yeah, there's literally only one room left. So, like, everybody else has been here. That's some kind of alien skull. What, can we imagine running into that creature with the big old spike on its fucking forehead? It's like a unicorn horn, except for designed for death. I don't even know what the fuck that creature would look like. It's aliens, dog. That's kind of pretty, though. You guys out in space somewhere? That's, like, Earth. I mean, obviously, the real picture is, like, based off of something from Earth. Like, that's a ship on a cliff, right? Like, that's kind of cool. It's really cool. Space exploration stuff. Constellation. Okay, that's what they're about. Common room on one side, so that'll be quiet, and Mateo on the other side, so maybe a little less quiet. I'm sure Sarah has something planned for each of us, so I'd better get back to it. Don't want to keep her waiting too long. Enjoy! Okay, this is my room. Your character's room. There's your little watch. The Chrono Mark watch case. That shit came with the, the special edition of the game, which is pretty sick. Um, obviously, we have a little bit of plants here, some vases, some towels. Like, we're so fancy. We got a bed you can sleep. Um all that stuff a great expectations book just because you know that's really setting up the tone for the thing but nothing i mean there's a safe in here this is a storage safe you can store whatever you want in here um it makes a cool noise <laughs> little digiframe chilling i wonder if that would display your pictures that you took or just random pictures or whatever so obviously it's a bethesda game so if we sleep even for just an hour right you wake feeling well rested well rested bonus right so we can Oh man, um, go to status here, status effect, 
plus 10% XP for 24 hours. I slept for one hour. I get 24 or minutes, maybe? Because it's already take the second. I don't know exactly how the time scale works in this game. But we're going to get the bonus XP because why not? We're here. So that's my room. There's a bar. I could get some drinks. Drinks are not a horrible thing, especially for a character who's going to be using melee, right? Um, if I can find them. A lot of this is just trash. Trash! Um, is there anything good here? There's all kinds of books. There's Moby Dick, there's Dracula, classic literature. My wife and I have something of an understanding. I have been informed that when I am home, I remain preoccupied with Constellation's work, which renders me cantankerous. What a word. My darling Issa has concluded that it is in both of our best interests I can spend my time with you for as long as often as possible. So we gotta meet Walter here as it is. Alright. So he, he spends a lot of time away from his wife because he's here at the lodge doing constellation stuff. But when he's at home, he's only thinking about his constellation stuff anyway, and it makes him kind of an asshole. Lately, I find myself spending more and more time here. Business has appealed to me. This is exciting. Yeah, I mean, the mysteries of space is exciting. What's up, Walter? Well, I suppose calling you a rock breaker may have been a bit out of A little bit? <laughs> if that was an apology, you could probably do better than that. I am sorry I besmirched your chosen profession and made assumptions about your character. Thank you. My frustrations lie more with Barrett. Not the first time his shenanigans have jeopardized one of our ventures. Not fair of me to take it out on you, especially since it would seem he made the right call this time. So, let's start over, shall we? Walter Stroud, CEO of Stroud Eklund, member of Constellation, and off times grumpy old man. Very much a grumpy old man. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Just glad to be here, man. By the way, in addition to a place to stay, the lodge has a wealth of modification and research equipment. Spacesuit customization, pharmaceutical manufacturing, testing alien substances. All the workbenches you need. It's kind of the home fashion base. Industrial pieces for large scale projects. If you don't mind extracting a few raw resources from a nearby planet. There's a lot of systems I'm in this game. I'm a fan of self-reliance. So I encourage you to make use of the tools we have to build what you need. And we'll do that if it becomes necessary. Oh, craft and modify an item. It gives us a thing. It literally, okay. Um, what kind of company is Stroud Auckland? Like, he's the CEO of a company. What company do you run? We're most well known for ship manufacturing. No expense spared. If you want the best and can afford it, you choose Stroud Eklund. Unfortunately, our success means you'll sometimes see Stroud Eklund ship modules on less than reputable vessels. They covered them. The bastards. I've tried to convince the United Colonies we can help in that regard, but they're married to Deimos Star Yards. And those old salts are stuck in the glory days. So, he makes ships, the best ships, but they cost the most money. And because they cost the most money and they're fancy ship parts, it's like getting fucking 22-inch rims on your vehicle. The pirates steal them. But also, he's trying to get the United Colonies military to use his ships. But instead, they use Deimos because Deimos was the ship manufacturer that got them through the war. But, you know. This is backstory stuff. Um, this is not... I mean, where's your, what's your role in Constellation? What do you do here? I'm the wallet. He just pays for things. Someone has to fund all this, and all my success in business doesn't mean much. It's if entrepreneurship. It He's the Mr. Beast of Starfield. I don't pretend to have the daring of Ms. Morgan or the smarts of young Mateo, but I can make sure that they have the resources they need. He just likes exploration of his base, and he's just paying he's the people to do seen. it. Those resources aren't being wasted. We're onto something big here. It is indeed at large. Hey. I'm not getting any young. I just barely the prompt really just showed up. Okay, shut up with your I'm sitting here in dialogue thing. Plus I'm talking to the you people on the YouTube, okay? <laughs> this is where I expect to find a CEO. Funny thing about companies, you build one sturdy enough, it doesn't need you there all the time to prop it up. Stroud Eklund functions quite well on a day-to-day -day basis, leaving me time to devote to more esoteric suits like constellations 
I was captivated by the writings of Constellation's founder, Sebastian Banks. I finally decided to do something more than admire from a distance, and so now I call the Lodge home as much as anywhere else. Okay. We could be done with this conversation, though. Bye. I have no more questions. Goodbye, Walter Stroud. We're going to talk to Mateo as well. I've been waiting my whole life for this. Constellation, the artifacts. That doesn't sound crazy, does it? Mateo's the one with the weird hat. It's a religious hat, I think, from the Are lore. Are you doing okay? I'm not sure anyone really asked yet. Don't want you to think we're focused on the artifacts and nothing else. Yeah, dude, I'm chilling. You matter, too. You've done something really significant bringing that artifact here. I'm it didn't seem that hard. Theological scholar by trade, but now, well, an explorer like you. It's really good to have you with us. Uh, these artifacts all came out of caves. Second one was on Kazar, buried the same as the one you found, but the first one, right under our noses for years, sitting in storage, masquerading as an oversized paperweight. Can you imagine potentially the greatest discovery in human history collecting dust? Uh, what do you make of the vision I saw? I'm not gonna lie. I really wish I could have seen this for myself. It's hard to judge otherwise. Both you and Barrett saw something. I don't think that's a coincidence. Did it feel like it was trying to tell you something? I don't want to necessarily use the words divine revelation. He thinks... Like it's God. <laughs> know. If the label fits. He does. I mean, he's religious. He thinks it's God. Um, I mean, I know it's important. It's like I'm not having visions for no reason. It has to be, right? All of this is connected. We just need to figure out how and why. We're going to get to the bottom of this. We just need more data, which means more artifacts. What brought you to Constellation? Well, there was some overlap in interests. I'd spent years searching for religious relics from human history. I had made a really incredible discovery only to lose it to a greedy corporation. So I tried to steal it back. In the process, I met Walter. Turned out he owned the corporation. After a long talk, we realized we had a lot in common, and I was invited to join Constellation. That's interesting, right? So he was like, Take care of yourself. that's what Mateo used to do. He was for religious artifacts. He had one. It was stolen by a corporation. He went to steal it back. The corporation was run by Walter, which we just talked about before, and then bam. Well, I suppose that station in orbit has more than paid for itself at this point. Good. I'm glad that you feel like your money isn't wasted. We obviously have Vasco. We got to talk to Sarah still now. That's what we're going to do. We got a magazine here. Permanently reduces fall damage by 5%. I mean, that's something, right? We take what we can get. So, are you ready to get to work? Or was there something else? Um, we can ask some questions. Uh, like, what is Constellation? What do you do? Just define it for me and everybody out there in the YouTube video. We're explorers. Humanity has always hunted for knowledge in the unknown. We just take that a little more seriously than others. Yeah, like real serious. Founded decades ago by a man named Sebastian Banks. He wanted a small group of people from all corners of the settled systems dedicated to the biggest question of all. What's out there? These artifacts could be everything we've been looking for. Another great secret the universe is asking us to unravel. So like, yeah, we're out in space, we're doing all this thing and stuff, like, right? Like, and people, humanity's obviously been out in space for a while, but there's still mysteries. Right? Space is a humongous fucking thing, this game is huge. How well known is Constellation? I don't know what you've heard, but I can imagine. First of all, I think you can dismiss any stories about us no longer existing. Hmm? I don't believe in smearing our name everywhere we can. Exploring the universe, charting the unknown, that's what counts. Besides, having a little mystery gives us room to maneuver. A fixed reputation could fence us in a lot of ways. That's true. Like, it's very true, right? Like, you know. But I, I'm, I'm pretty much ready to go. We're going to be doing some old-fashioned detective work. Batman! The artifacts are relatively inert once they're out of bedrock. That means people can pass them around, not even knowing what they are. I've been letting my contacts know to be on the lookout for strange metal objects. Get back a lot of noise, usually. But a tip from the UC Vanguard sounds promising. Uh... 
And then legwork, you could be so negative. Legwork never pays off quite the way you expect. Um, do you see Vanguard? What's that? I don't know shit about shit. I'm gonna just do it for you guys. Force that helps defend the edges of United Colonies space. They're always looking for recruits. Lots of retired veterans and dangerous professionals mixed in with part-timers who barely have a laser cannon welded to a hull. My contact is in the recruiting office, so he hears a lot about what the volunteers are up to. Uh, other people have artifacts, but they don't know. We know that already. Um, I'm excited, though. My first mission. My first real mission. I'm a real boy. Or girl character, but you know. Electricity in the air. Know you're about to uncover something. I don't know if it's that exciting to me, but like I'm excited. But it's not I just want to do the things. I want to take this opportunity to see how you handle yourself and for you to learn more about us. I'm going to be sticking with you for this. We'll be traveling together until we either find an artifact or this lead runs dry. Right, you and me until we get that artifact. We'll need to head to Mast. Check in with the Vanguard recruiting office where my contact works. And listen, whatever you were before, or whatever you do once you're out there, I don't care. So long as you don't bring UC security to our doors. Don't do illegal shit, and then other than that, it's fine. Every constellation is their own conscience. Understood? Yeah, everybody's different. There's a lot of people in this group, and they all have different motivations and different ways that they think should are necessary to get to the desired result. Some people are like stealing, whatever, dude. You got to steal things sometimes. Sometimes people are like, hey, yo, right? Like, you know, but, so, you know, they're all they're all different kind of people and they all have different likes and dislikes. I understand, though. Good. Let's take a little stroll through New Atlantis. So, now. obviously, we got to talk to the UC Vanguard. That's his whole other thing. Sarah Morgan is now our companion. Um, we're going to go talk to Sarah's contact. But first, we're going to go down here because this is where all of my crafting benches are at. So, we have a weapon workbench. We have a spacesuit workbench. It's essentially an armor workbench, right? We have an industrial workbench. We can craft materials here. Like, we can, well, craft, like, iron into certain things you can use to craft settlement stuff. It's a complicated deal. We obviously get a free med pack. Pharmaceutical lab. We can craft things there. A cooking station. Um, we have a computer here, uh, which has missions in here. There's also more stuff back in here, but nothing really significant. Um, you know, some shelves and stuff. Doesn't. There's this suit here, um, which is a master locked suit. Right, that is the deal. Right, you can't. You're supposed to get this. You know, once you get master lock picking, you can get the suit. I've heard. Well, don't get stuck. That there is a way to get this anyway. Now I don't exactly know what that way is, and I'm not too worried about it because it is kind of a cheese thing. Technically, you're supposed to, but like, there's a way to like look through the gap in the in the thing right you don't want to look at the door but you want to like look in between I don't know what even the gap is like what are they referring to I've just heard about it on the internet that you can look through the gap and then pick it up I think I almost had it just spamming the A button yeah, I have boost pack now that's true too okay I'm not too worried about the suit though but I there, there, you could fiddle with this I know that oh there's like a, see like there's a tiny like a tiny tiny little gap in the thing like a hole in there, right? Like, so if you angle that correctly, maybe you could do it. I don't know. They haven't patched the game yet, as far as I'm aware. So I don't think there's a, a way where, like, they've prevented you from doing that yet. I'm really stuck in this thing. <laughs> but obviously, we're just, we can wait for the master lockpicking. We're going to lockpick. We'll do it the legit way. Like, but I, I'm just showing off that you can't, like, there's a way to do that. I'm just not sure what that way is. A little more back room storage room. Nothing of significance in here, but... To, we have a little side quest activity to do, like craft a single thing. So you might as well do that while we're here, right? As activities. Like these are like not even side quests, just little things. Complete a research product, modify an item, just craft or modify an item. So we obviously we got research here. Research is kind of important. The research lab lets you discover new crafting recipes by completing a research project. Each research project requires materials in order to make progress. The materials needed can range from raw minerals extracted from planets to organic substances extracted from alien creatures and plant life to manufactured components that can be made in an industrial workbench. So if we wanted to be like good at cooking, we could learn cooking. Now obviously we need red meat, cheese, and bread, and then we could learn how to make that. Um, so we can't do that one currently. You could do stuff to make outposts, manufacturing, decorations, robots. And obviously, some of these higher level ones are attached to perks. So, like, same thing with pharmacology, right? So, we can make some basic drugs, or to get advanced drugs, like, you know, we can do different things. Or equipment, like helmet mods, spacesuit mods, pack mods. All that stuff requires spacesuit design, which is a perk, barrel mods, grip and stock mods, which is like, these are mostly just guns. I don't think this actually applies to melee attachments necessarily. 
So we could we could pick something in here. I don't know if we really have anything we can even do out of these things because we don't have the material. Zero, 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 right? Like we just haven't done enough stuff yet. Like we have some of that. We have iron and seeing that we don't have any zero wire or adaptive frames. We can maybe craft zero wire or adaptive frames. So like you take that stuff here. The industrial work which allows you to create basic manufacturing components. There's a lot of systems, okay? A lot of stuff in this game. And I'm not even very good at it, but we'll see here. Allows you to create basic manufacturing components which can be used for building structures for your outposts and crafting mods for your weapons and equipment. The raw resources used for manufacturing components can be acquired from planets and moons by starting an outpost and setting up resource extractions, or you could just manually do it. More advanced manufacturing components can be created from fabrications at an outpost. So we needed, what did we need? I don't even remember now. We needed some zero wire. We can make like two of those. To put that to good use. So I crafted that, that. Probably crafted as a crafted something anyway. I just need to remember what I need for research, and I'm really bad at that. So, <laughs> what was I doing anyway? Either like I was like equipment, or no, I was like outpost development. We need three adaptive frames. Okay, so we'll make three adaptive frames. Obviously, you can find this stuff out in the world too. So it's like you gotta start learning what to do. But if I can go in here, maybe I can make three adaptive frames. And then we can complete a research just to say we did um, right off rip here, right? There's a, <laughs> a lot of stuff. So outpost development, manufacturing, input, yep. Put one in there, put iron in there. Project complete, manufacturing two is now available. We can't do manufacturing too because we need outpost engineering, but we can manufacture some basic ass shit at outpost. I don't even know if I'm doing outpost, like to be honest with y'all, I guess a lot. But I completed the research. Okay? Like, I completed this. We have, we've significantly reduced the amount of stuff here that we have going on, right? And right now, we only have the main mission, which is talk to Sarah's contact, and some basic side activity things. We can get to it, and they might lead to side quests and all the things. We have a lot of stuff on the go. Um, for now, that'll call that good. Do we have something on here? We have a coachman shotgun. Always take all the ammo. Ammo is still just like Fallout 4. Weightless. So you can just take as much ammo as you want. There's never a reason not to take ammo. But you can technically take the guns too to sell them if you want to do that. You can obviously display your own weapons on those weapon racks. I believe they refill with weapons though on their own. Which is kind of cool. And obviously there's some basic food stuff here. Lettuce, onions, uh, a tomato. You say tomato, I say tomato, right? Um... But we're gonna head out now. We're gonna we're gonna actually go do some some questing things. We've done a lot of talking this episode. This game is a lot of talking though. It is is it's an RPG RPG. You guys okay? Like if you want to get it twisted, um, see my parents at Pioneer Tower. Uh, there's something I have not done with my other character. My other character doesn't have my other parents at all. My other character is an introvert, so they just hate being around people in general. Um, it makes it so like you see this oxygen system we have going on here, right? Where like I run out of oxygen by running around and stuff. So my character, if other people are around at all, gets, it like burns faster. Like I just gas because the people are around. Now obviously, we're gonna get our CO2 all the way maxed out here. I gotta remember where to go. It's down here, but I wanna max out my CO2 so we can get, there we go. Not that wear off on purpose. Okay, we're gonna, we can visit our parents at some point. There's so many things, you guys. Like I just didn't even do anything and it's just a side quest showed up. Now we're gonna go talk to the UC Vanguard, which is right here at Mast, right? I don't know what mass stands for. Did we, I'm going to check to see like if this perk is going up or if I just like got lucky one time. No, it's three. We are slowly getting that up. And eventually we could get more oxygen. Like so we can see here, sprinting and power attacks now use significantly less oxygen. So we can run for a lot longer and we could power attack, which is going to be very important for melee build. So I think physical stats is kind of where it's at. We obviously have to let it come all the way back though. But let's talk to the UC Vanguard. Because they got a pro tip about where the artifact is anyway. I obviously have to do a little bit of walking here now for that. And then we'll talk to this man here. Sarah, good to see you. Who's your friend? Hopefully Constellation's newest member. Thought I'd run through some notes. You're standing so far over there, Sarah. Companions oh, are weird. Another space explorer. Hey, you ever think of joining up with the Vanguard? Help the United Colonies, earn some credits, even get your UC citizenship? I mean... Sign me up, dude. I don't guess. I'll just fucking do all the things. Because there's nothing that hurts you in this game. Nothing that blocks you off from doing, to a certain extent, other things. Um, off rip, anyway. Um, so, yeah. Sign me up. Excellent. Just need to do a little paperwork. An orientation on the UC, knock out an exam, and a probationary mission. We need to know you'll be able to hack it out there, after all. Do well. You'll be out there keeping the peace. Keeping the peace. I'm going to be a good person. Don't forget, John. I need her back after you wrap her in that fancy get-up of yours. 
No worry, Sarah. I'm not forgetting about you or our little business afterwards. Promise. First things first. Head down to the So apparently, we are not <laughs> doing the main quest because we have to do that later. Because we're drawing a vanguard. System will walk you through the rest. Okay. So oh, if you got a bounty, well, we're gonna have to make things right with the UC before we'll let you. Try. So yeah, obviously, you could do other people's quests, e Questions even people opposed to the UC, the United Colonies. But you just pay the bounty off, and then you can do their quest anyway. They don't really care. Bounty system, baby. So apparently, we're joining the UC Vanguard. It's over here. If you don't have official business, we ask. You I have official business. I'm going to orientation. Okay, I have to prove that I am good at things. Okay. I haven't done this. I did not join the Vanguard specifically with my other character. Okay, my applicant name is Clara, not Clara, robot. Um, to request, to register your examination, please click. Uh, any, uh, I, I, Clara, agree. Yep, good. Main menu, sick. Okay, explore the orientation hall. Is it? So they have like backstory, the end of Earth. So we can learn about all the things here. Earth died. That's the story. Decisive action was required, but the secure transport of an entire civilization would demand a new kind of cooperation, a new kind of courage, and a new kind of union. Thus, in 2159, the United Colonies were formed to make that journey possible. Just one year later, Galileo, the first of many colony ships, touched down here on Jemison, beginning a new era of human history, the age of the United Colonies. So, quick run through of that. The Earth was going to die. Earth figured out that the Earth was going to die. So they, instead of like being different countries and nations and all this other shit they decided to form the united colonies which is literally at, uh, all of earth as one solid force and this is who we're working for right now this is the uc vanguard right these are the people that protect united colonies interests in space and because the earth doesn't exist anymore it, it, well that's not true it does exist well we could show that off later um <laughs> but it's no longer ha habitable that's a, i don't know if that's how you say that word it feels wrong in my head but so they do that and then they come out into space so this is essentially the remnants of earth force kind of right like people from earth all banded together right so to form the united colonies yeah the, it's crazy that they evacuated the whole planet i'm sure everybody didn't make it but they don't probably talk about that part new factions rise huh Security is a big focus for the UC. But there were those among the UC that still wanted something more. Independence. Independence. So in 2161, the UC issued the Centaurus Proclamation, granting UC citizens the right to settle distant worlds. So to be fair, and form their own the UC allowed people to... You don't want to be UC? You can go to your own fucking planet and do your own fucking thing. Who gives a fuck? I don't care what you do. Which is good. I mean, freedom. Freedom of choice. It wasn't long before the first new faction, the Free Star Collective, was formally organized in 2188, later followed by House Rule, revealing themselves to the universe in 2230. So much conflict arose as a result. Yes, freedom is important, okay? Like, it's like that, that's a good question. Is it worth it? Yes. It is important that we allow people to be free, even if they made bad factions, potentially. The Free Star Collective, right? This is their outfits and stuff. This is House of Arun. They're kind of a crazy cult people. It's not, you know, super good. Can we, like, steal the armor? Is it just, like, sitting here, actually? That's kind of a cool suit, though. Maybe we'll be Free Star Collective later on in our journey. Um, so, the Serpent's Crusade, I guess. All that war, that's good. Over the next 
souls were killed by agents of House Varun in the name of their serpent god. Yeah, they believe in the snake god. Don't worry about it. With the death of their founder in 2263 and the succession of his heir, Jarek, that House Varun finally sued for peace. Sued for peace? I don't know. Apparently it's in the future. However, select members of House Varun who refuse to recognize the cessation of hostilities their leaders... Yeah, they're crazy cold people. Who believe in the Even snake god. After House Varun's mysterious disappearance, these zealots remain a threat to all who encounter them. Their pacification. Yeah, they're always hostile as far as I can tell. Unless you probably may pick that religion, like, as your starting set. I did not, so. Conflict, other conflict. Of the many conflicts between the galaxy's factions, none was more brutal than the recent colony war between the UC and the Freestar Collective. So yeah, because that's what Sarah was talking about. Is it worth it? Because they allowed these other factions to split off of them. To, to, to go do their own thing. But then all of these other factions that were created. The House of Varun and the Freestar Collective. And the Freestar Collective War is worse. Went to war with them. They, they fought each other. Because they're they're different, right? That's how tribalism works in humanity and civilization and stuff, right? Off by the unauthorized Freestar colonization of Vesta's Pride in 2308. A direct violation of the Nerion Treaty. The colony war spread quickly across the galaxy. Both sides deployed every tool at their disposal. Armadas of warships, mechanized combat they had mechs. platforms, or mechs. Mechs. They don't exist anymore. They're outlawed features. because of this war. The infamous UC Xeno weapons. So yeah, the United Colonies comes out with controlled alien species we kind of learned about that at that research station where they're like trying to control the alien right like there's all kinds of backstory and lore there only in 2311 at the battle of cheyenne that the scales finally tipped the free star collective utilizing their civilian fleet as a human shield successfully crippled the superior united colonies navy history is written by the victor right so like I, i'm not pausing here but i i really want to note how Interesting it is that they're like, oh, Freestar Collective was a bunch of fucking cowards and then they beat us, even though we were superior to them. It's just, it's, it's funny how they talk about it like that. And I'm sure if you talk to the Freestar Collective, they're like, no, we kind of own their little bitch ass. Like, it's just, it's just, I love how, like, the differences of the perspective, right? After their shocking victory against the galaxy's greatest navy, the Freestar Collective offered terms of peace, which the colonies out of an interest in staving off any further human costs except so they, they're, they're treating they're not at war with each other right now has been rebuilding that was pretty space. recently in space history right in the was a horrible conflict that irreparably wounded the settled systems there were times i felt so I never recent in the history of sarah morgan would have been alive when it was happening right the battle of near different things Star planet of Nera. Initially occupied by invading United Colonies forces as a forward operating position, repeated attempts to take and retake the planet by collective forces led only to devastation. Swaths of the world were transformed into scorched husks, a nightmarish testament to the depths of human ingenuity and human cruelty. And today, I wonder if we can go. I bet you could go to that planet and then you see just big ass fucking craters where they just killed the shit out of each other. Thousands and thousands of people died. Those are the mechs. You're not allowed to use them anymore. Could you imagine them? Maybe in the DLC or something. That'd be sick. There's a big ass fucking. Things like an artist rendition, right? No animal can be this ugly in real life. No, that's a real thing. Centeromorphs can control people's minds. But that can't be true. I mean. You fucking never know. I'm imagining we're gonna have to punch one of these things in the face to death at some point. Um, so we'll talk about that, I think, here. In the midst of the colony war, a different kind of tragedy struck the UC city of Londinian. A newly constructed but critical supply center for the United Colonies war effort, Londinian found itself overrun by one of the galaxy's most mysterious predators, the Terramorph. That ugly fucking thing. A rare but pervasive threat to all 
old human settled worlds. Terramorphs swept over the city, seemingly out of nowhere. Killed them all. I'm sure. They're just absolute terrifying alien monsters. Valiant efforts by the UC military slowed the onslaught, but the creatures proved unstoppable. Yeah, shoot them all. Yeah, I dare you, but it didn't help. Ultimately, the decision was made to destroy the Londinian spaceport, sealing off the city. And its from the so, 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 do you see the United Colonies? They want to talk about how these are the good guys. They're, they're, they're saying they got overrun with xenomorphs or were starting to, and they, they gave up on it. And they probably nuked that bitch, right? Like, maybe not directly a nuclear bomb, but they just said, fuck it, we'll kill everybody. No survivors, right? And that is that a good decision? You can, you can argue the morality of that and stuff. I think that's really interesting. It's really good lore. The tragedy of Londinian is born by the UC to this day. More stuff. The armistice, all kinds of things. We're going to keep going through lore. How much the Vanguard is born? And then we're ready to go here. Okay, we are three more. We're going to do the three more slides, okay? we got to learn the history. I think it's important we understand. And then we never have to do it again. After the devastation wrought by the colony war, the UC and the Freestyle Collective came together to ratify a treaty that became known as the Armistice. Both sides agreed to a vast reduction in standing forces, and that Xeno weapons and mech warfare would be outlawed. Mech warfare is outlawed, so you're not allowed to have them anymore. No one's making mech. research was sealed away, accessible only in cases of dire emergency. You can't even make them if the research doesn't but exist. the collective had another demand, that the active commanders of the UC military stand trial for their actions. The United Colonies, in the interest of peace and galactic security, agreed. In 2311, three United Colony senior officers were found guilty. Commander Henry Durant, General Indira Rastogi, and Fleet Admiral Francois Senon, known better as Ve Victus. All were sentenced to death for their actions, bringing the colony war to a close. The Free Star Collective won. If they got to decide that these people stand trial for their actions, they won. That's, that's, that's how that went, okay? Both sides used against one another. It had to end. It did end, with people dying though. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I'm learning about lore. It was into this new world that the Vanguard was born. An official branch of the UC Navy, the Vanguard is the United Colonies Volunteer Fleet, serving a myriad of security, logistical, and reconnaissance roles. The Navy SEALs. Who are all to the purposes? I don't know if that matters very much, but you know, here we go. We're gonna just do it because it's quests, right? Regardless of origin, the Vanguard is leading the charge to protect and support the citizens of the United Colonies, wherever in the galaxy they may be. So yeah, we, it, it helps UC citizens, though, specifically. And they're not gonna help the Freestar Collective, necessarily. It's a complicated thing. There's factions. There's a lot of stuff going on in this game. Um... Vanguard armor. It very much looks like uh, Destiny Vanguard armor. The same blue and orange color scheme. One more slide. The United Colony Citizen. Which could be us, I guess, if we do enough of these things. Is born a United Colony Citizen. Only through service to the UC can one hope to earn one citizen. Which is kind of fucked up. But the UC prides itself on taking care of its people. Cost of living controls mean citizens pay less than their foreign counterparts for needs big and small. You do enough stuff for us, we'll make it worth your while by making you this UC citizen, and then therefore you don't have to pay for as much stuff later and we'll take care of you when you're old and all this other shit. It's all citizens are issued a threat upon joining to get themselves on their feet. And only UC citizens have the opportunity to purchase property. Getting the chance to live in one of the most beautiful cities in the settled systems. You gotta be in debt and servitude. Today, you too can begin earning your place here, in the heart of galactic civilization, as a citizen of the United Colonies.
like I'm not personally too worried about it or whatever but we are going to do that we're going to get in here but we're gonna do that next time it's already been a long episode you guys I apologize there's a lot of lore today um, we met constellation we learned a lot about the UC Vanguard and its perspective on history remember we have to keep that whole situation in mind this is what the Vanguard the UC the United Colonies thinks of the events that previously had led up to this and obviously the Freestar Collective thinks of it a different way the House of Arun thinks of it a different way there's more even factions out there there's obviously a whole fleet of Crimson Fleet pirates that have their own opinions about things and there's all kinds of things we're gonna do the Vanguard stuff and we'll do that more next time and then maybe continue the main quest we'll see how that stuff goes but hopefully you guys did enjoy this part all the same if you guys did make sure to leave a like rating down below I would greatly appreciate that um, you know help support me and the channel you can also subscribe, obviously, that way you can check out more parts of me and ring the bell so that way you get notified when I upload the videos. I'm going to try to do three of these Starfield playthrough videos a week as well as three Fallout 4 mod videos a week. And um, you can also become a channel member. Then the link way in the bottom of the description. You can pay me a dollar a month to support the channel directly and it does make you feel pretty good. We have one channel member right now, Chris Redfield from Resident Evil. He's our single member. It's crazy that somebody even did that. I don't believe that, like, I don't have any obligation to any of y'all to do that shit. But... Next time, we will see what the UC Vanguard has in store for us. We'll see the Vanguard Pilot Simulator. Um, I'm not a very good pilot. We'll see how that fucking shit goes. And I will see you guys in the next episode. You have a good rest of your day or whatever time it may be. No, don't forget that part, okay? Bye-bye.